first of all, I, I want to thank all the media for being here this afternoon. And, and I apologize for running late, but as you can tell, the community was extremely excited and happy to have uh, Stephen here back home, to welcome him back home. Uh, I guess what we'll do, we'll open it up to the, the media for questions, and, and Stephen will, uh, I guess, answer any questions that you all might have. Again, thank you very much for being here, Stephen. Thank you. I don't know how this works. <laughs> What's the first question? I'm Gail from The Monitor. How's it going? Good, good. Um, I just wanted to know how you feel having so much support coming home when these events organized for you. Yeah, uh, I was hearing like little rumors when I was in London about you know what was going to happen when I came back. and I, I didn't expect to turn out, you know, because shop is not like football or basketball, mm -hmm. so I was like, maybe it won't be that big, but it was it was pretty big. And, then, and coming into the mariachis playing was pretty nice. <laughs> it's just been overwhelming. You know, having so much support from the community, and it's, it feels good to have, know I have that support, so I can just keep on working hard for the next Olympics in Rio de Janeiro. Yes, that being said, what did you learn about, what did you learn the most that you think you'll be able to apply the most once you get to uh, Rio in 2016? Well, four years ago I was in high school, and I wasn't expected to be here, you know, at the Olympics, so now doing it, not only am I going to prepare better for the next Olympics, but I'm also going to also know that I've seen the level of athletes that go there, and all right, physically I'm not there yet, so I know I'm going to train harder and train, you know, like like an Olympian because, you know, you know, high school training is not the same as a college or professional. So, yeah, no, just 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 with the uh, the one against those people just really made me realize where I have to be. And I think I'm going to be there in four years, you know, physically and mentally. Did you get a chance to meet any of your, you know, sports idols as far as throwers or any any other sport? There was a this guy from Iran. He has a snatch 217 kilos, and people don't know the like, weight of the thing, but he's like I, I watch him all the time on YouTube, so I gotta meet him. I can't pronounce his name, but he's he's pretty good. And then um, I mean, I mean, I didn't meet Michael Phelps, but I kind of kind of saw him there. <laughs> saw him and you know Sonia Richards, Lolo Jones. Uh, Lochte. I met um, Bernard Lagat, one of the best smilers in the world. And then Koji Marafushi, Japan hammer thrower, also. So I met a, some pretty cool people, and they were real nice. All the athletes were real nice. So it was a good experience. Sí, en español, nos podrías comentar un poquito acerca de cuál fue el proceso que hiciste para llegar hasta los Juegos Olímpicos. My Spanish is not very good. <laughs> <laughs> it's on the Can bed. If I can, I can yeah. help you. Yeah. <laughs> I want to try. It's not good. Yeah, I don't think you'd appreciate the, the Spanish idea. <laughs> <laughs> how, how was your experience going there if you could explain something in the Spanish? No, I just, um, it was it's definitely eye-opening. You know, um, made me realize, like I, like I said earlier, where I have to be in four years and just, just being there in the village, seeing all these athletes just made me want to be there again, you know. Being an athlete, I went there, I didn't do very good. But next time around, I think I'll be more prepared, so. Eh, esta oportunidad le abrió los ojos para darse cuenta que, bueno, eh, para él es muy importante seguirse preparando. En cuatro años va a tratar de ser uno de los mejores. Sí, la pregunta era que cómo había sido su proceso para llegar ah, hasta sí. el what was your process to, to be there? Yes. You can explain something like, in Spanish. Like how I... How, you how he was prepared? That's like, that's what you mean? This is preparation you wanted to? How was your process to be there? Okay, so how my... How do you mean prepare? Like, like how I'm going for the team? Uh -huh. Is that what you got? Yeah. Okay, so now my grandma is, is from Mexico. And so, so, so abuela is de Mexico. And last summer, uh, Mexico coached me and they said, I want you to compete for us in the CAC Games, Central el, American and Caribbean. Ajá, el último verano, México se acercó a él para preguntarle si podía eh, ir a representación de México y del mm -hmm. Caribe. And um, I went, did real well, and I went to some other competitions, you know, national championships and stuff like that for Mexico. And they really liked me. You know, I got a well, a well with the team. You know, I do, I do speak Spanish, it's just not to the level. Oh, that should be good. Eh, fue a México y tuvo la oportunidad de participar en algunas de las competencias mm -hmm. y bueno fue una muy bonita experiencia para él. So, so just um, 
you know, they kept on calling me back, wanting me to go to meets everywhere they, they sent me, and they said, hey, you hit the beat standard, the IWF, IWAF standard, and you can go. And that was in 1990, 1980, 1990. I finally hit 20 meters, and they said, okay, you're going to the Olympics, and that's, that's how it worked out. Just hit that, hit that standard, and then I could go. Bueno, pues eh, con, con, quedaron sorprendidos y lo contactaron nuevamente para que pudiera, le estuvieron diciendo que si quería ir a los Juegos Olímpicos y bueno, finalmente ahí, ahí está. Stephen, eh, periódico enlace de aquí de Sarkhan. Eh, pues también, ¿qué significa para ti representar a México? What means for you to represent Mexico? You know, it means a lot, you know. I grew up in the border, so I was in Mexico, United States, and, you know, I'm, I'm Hispanic, so I have roots, I'm not, you know, I have no white blood in me, even though I look a little lighter. Um, <laughs> no, I, I just, I love it. You know, I was going down to the first time, I was like, they're not, they're not going to want me on their team. You know, I, my Spanish is good, but it's not, you know, to their level. But I got there and they, you know, really adopted me into their system. And um, it felt, you know, felt good. And just, you know, to wear the Mexican colors to represent my heritage is amazing. And uh, they give me the, this great opportunity and I'm running with it. and representing them the best I can to win a championships for them. So, so I, I love it right now. It's, it's the best time of my life right now. It's fun. Well, you talked a little bit about that, but what emotions do you feel when you were walking with the Mexican delegation and seeing the same thing? They're all fun. You know, our delegation president's hilarious. You know, <laughs> just, we went to London, went out to, and the sides, he was making jokes all the time. And you know we really clicked, got together. We had long conversations, you know, just about training, about their mentality of training. And it's just, no, it's fun. They, 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 we all like each other. It's, I think it's the most friendly, the friendliest team at the Olympics because we we're just always laughing and everyone hung out with each other. So it was fun. Yeah. Steven, talk a little bit about entry. the moment of your entry through the tunnel and with the team. Mexico with the team. That's the question. Yeah, it was. Um, that's something I'll never forget. You know. Um, you know, you know, when you're walking down the tunnel, you see blue because you know the strings. And uh, Antonio is next to me. He's like, "Hey, man, we're gonna go to the tunnel." <laughs> and we we're just all laughing. I used to do that all the time, right? And we went to the stadium. They said, "Let's go." And, you know, everyone just started cheering. You know, it wasn't as loud as the Americans. It was very loud, and we we just soaked it all in, running from side to side. And it was it was a great moment. I, you know, people were watery eyed, and everyone was hugging each other. And it was definitely one of the best moments of my life. To represent Mexico was awesome. So. What was the most surprising thing you found in London? What was the most, the craziest thing that they have over there in London that you, <laughs> that really struck you? In the village? You know, you I know you took pictures by Big Ben and Buckingham Palace yeah. and, the, and all the call boxes. But <clears throat> anything else you found there that was hmm. pretty wild, pretty crazy, something you'd only seen on TV? Double decker buses. Those, I rode on the top of a couple of those, and we made some sharp turns. And I was on the side, like we're gonna, we're gonna tilt. You know, it was, it was amazing the way drivers <laughs> drive those things. So that was pretty, that was pretty interesting. To me. But, but yeah, I mean, other than that, just the, the the buildings, the designs. You don't really appreciate the details on these buildings until you get up close and personal. And yeah, that was pretty amazing. Yeah, took a lot of pictures of that. So, but yeah. So what's next for you? You have to head back to school? I go back to school on Thursday, uh, 17 hours. <laughs> so it's going to be a lot of work. No, but um, World Championships for next year uh, in, in Moscow, Russia. And so I'm going to train hard for that. Got a year of training. So um, either that or University Games in Cesar, Russia. And so I'm going overseas, I think, regardless. And um, I, don't, I want to you know, represent Mexico well. You know, this time in the Olympics, I didn't do as well as I wanted to. But I think I'll be more prepared for the next next go around. So just get back to training, get back to school, and uh, yeah, and stay And what's your major? Again? Um, strength and conditioning and physical activity. That's a new major. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I'm gonna be a football like strength coach at college. I know I have a lot of. I know I've met a lot of people through track, so I think I have a lot of connections for like job opportunities and stuff. So. Um, I'm sorry, I'm not media, but I have a question for you that a lot of people here are curious about. Um, I mean, we, we see the size of the guys that are throwing shot put, uh, in relation to 
you because you know you're younger than them and you're not doing this professionally. But I think one of the things that we're really impressed with is is how strong you are in comparison to all of us. And so one of the things that has come up a lot is is there any kind of special diet? Because like we hear Michael Phelps eats 10,000 calories a day, you know, to do whatever he does in the pool. But is there any kind of like diet or exercise or some kind of a routine that you follow? Um, as far as diet goes, chicken breast and mashed potatoes. <laughs> <laughs> and on Mondays I make about 15 chicken breasts. You cut them all up. Then every time I eat it, you put mashed potatoes for carbs, protein chocolate milk and I just trying to keep my body weight up because at the Olympics I was probably the weakest, shortest, and smallest one by a lot. Mm -hmm. They're just, uh, you know, there's, it's not NCAA, they're grown men. So I still have a long ways to go, but not nah, just as far as training. We live twice a week if people think it's weird, but we lived like four hours. So it's it's pretty intense and not diet, just, you know, try to keep it consistent and try to just get a lot of carbs in my body because we do train a lot and it is hot in Alabama, it's humid, so we do waste a lot of, you know, calories while we work out, but no, I mean, that's pretty much, that's pretty much it. Just eat as much as you can all the time. I'm a thrower, I'm not a runner, so I don't care. Algo que nos sorprende mucho también es, porque para ti primero la escuela, primero los estudios, es una parte muy importante en relación a, pero aún así pudiste conseguir este sueño de estar en los Olympics. ¿Qué le dirías, por ejemplo, a los chicos nuevos que están en 12, en 11, este, que también sueñan con estar donde tú estuviste. No, I mean, school, it always comes first, you know. Uh, when I was 12 or 13, you know, I was, I don't know, and I was doing, I was doing baseball, baseball, but you know, my parents, they were in education, so they always stressed school. And um, yeah, I mean, I read, what, 500 books when I was that age in school, just to kind of AR program. So I was always reading, always learning, and. And that also helped me because, you know, I felt good about myself that I was getting smarter. And in sports, you know, I felt real confident, you know, I'm like, hey, you know, I'm a scholar athlete. I'm not just an athlete who's just doing the school motion. So, you know, just stressing school big time, especially when you're younger, you know, you don't want to, and you want to get as much education as you can out of the way when you're too small. But, but yeah, you know, just stress school. And, you know, I, I think I'm above a 3.0 right now, so I'm not a, <laughs> a dumb job. So. No. Um, I know at these games there were some issues about the Olympic spirit and, and you know questions about doping. I mean, do you have anything to say that as far as why you shouldn't do that and why you know kids who are coming up being athletes now? I did it clean, uh, and not not no jokes in my body. You know. Um, in high school, you know, kids say, hey man, let's go, let's go drink, let's go smoke, but I was one of those kids who's like, like, now I'm better than that, you know, I'm smarter than that, and I think it showed, I mean, I'm at the Olympics, I'm doing well in college, I was second in the NCAA by a foot, I missed winning the NCAA championships, but, but no, nah, I mean, I, I, I don't respect anyone who does, who does that, you know, there's a couple of throwers who got banned for four years for doing that, it's, it's like, come on, man, like, like, why would you try to cheat your way to a gold medal when all you guys are doing it clean? And there is doping out there, but I don't know. I just, yeah, I just don't respect people who do that. And it's, it's cheating the system. It's cheating other people. So, yeah, just do it clean. If, if not, you know, we certainly thank all of you for being here. And Stephen, it's a great pleasure and an honor having you back, you. back in, in town. And uh, what can we say? We're thrilled about you. Again, thank you all very much. Thank you.